Let's take a look at our lesson objectives for this review lesson. First, we'll practice a stoichiometry problem. Then we'll practice a limiting reactance problem. And lastly, we'll practice calculating percent yield. So you can see that we're basically all about practicing your chemical reaction math here. Let's start with stoichiometry, which is a big scary word for thinking about chemical recipes, chemical reactions. Here we have a very important chemical reaction. One nitrogen molecule combines with three hydrogen molecules to form two NH3 molecules, which is ammonia, which forms the basis of fertilizer, which is what you see in this person's hand here, and it's the basis for our modern agricultural system. It lets us grow all these crops. So let's focus in on this chemical reaction. When we think about stoichiometry, it's very important to keep in mind the ratios things react in. And so I've even added a one in front of nitrogen just to help you keep in mind that one of these things reacts with three of the hydrogens to make two of the NH3s. Now, we don't typically include units here, but if we wrote it out in a more complete way, we would see that one mole of nitrogen plus three moles of hydrogen gives me two moles of ammonia. So these actually secretly have units. And it's very important to remember that chemical reactions are in moles. So if we ever want to use our chemical reactions, we got to be in moles. Let's take a look at our practice stoichiometry problem. This question says, how many grams of NH3 result from the reaction of 2.03 grams of nitrogen with excess hydrogen? It also tells us that NH3 has a molar mass of 17.03 grams per mole, and nitrogen has a molar mass of 28.02 grams per mole. All right, well, let's set up our conversion train track, shall we? And we know that we're going to be starting with nitrogen. That's the quantity we're given, 2.03 grams of nitrogen. And we want to eventually find out how much ammonia, or NH3, we can make. To do that, we'll need to use our chemical recipe, which means we're going to need to go to moles. So we'll get rid of the grams nitrogen and go to moles nitrogen. That's where our molar mass comes in, right? The whole point of molar mass is that it goes between grams and moles. And we're told that for our nitrogen, 28.02 grams is one mole. Now we're in moles of nitrogen. This means we can use our chemical recipe. We want to get rid of moles of nitrogen, and we want to go to moles of NH3. So now I fill this in with my stoichiometric coefficients, which is a fancy way to say these numbers up front. For nitrogen, we put a 1, and for NH3, we put a 2. Basically, if we think about what this math is doing, it's taking the moles of nitrogen and multiplying it by 2 to give us the moles of ammonia. Notice we've been asked for grams of NH3, and so we need to use molar mass again to get rid of moles of NH3 and to go to grams of NH3. The molar mass of NH3 we're given in the problem is 17.03. So now grab your calculator. If you take 2.03, divide it by 28.02, multiply by 2, and then multiply by 17.03, you should get 2.4675 dot dot dot, some other digits. Keep in mind here, that we're going to want to round to three sig figs. And that's because our nitrogen, our 2.03 grams of nitrogen, has three sig figs. So we'll keep the first three, and that six will round up because of the seven after it. And we want to add our units grams. And then here in stoichiometry problems, we want to think about not just grams, but grams of what? Well, this is grams of NH3. Okay, so that's a stoichiometry problem where we are given just one of our chemical reactants. Things get a little more complicated when we deal with limiting reactants. Here it says, what is the limiting reactant when 2.03 grams of nitrogen react with 0.489 grams of hydrogen? It also tells us the molar mass of NH3 and of H2, and lastly says, what is the theoretical yield in grams? This problem is more complicated because we're given information about both nitrogen and hydrogen, and so we'll need to set up two train tracks of conversion. And one will start with our nitrogen, and one will start with our hydrogen. We actually already did the problem up top. If that problem was sketchy to you, it's actually a great idea to pause the video and see if you can, from memory, reproduce the conversion we just did to go from grams of nitrogen to grams of ammonia. Well, when we did that, we got 2.47 grams of NH3. And now I want everyone to pause the video and complete this math for our hydrogen. How many grams of NH3 will we be able to get out from our hydrogen? Well, go ahead, pause the video, give that a try. You should get 
2.75 grams of NH3. And notice that I've highlighted in red here our first difference between the two calculations. When dealing with hydrogen, notice we've used the molar mass of hydrogen. What's the next difference? The next difference is that we have three moles of H2 on the bottom instead of one mole into, and that's because we're getting rid of moles of hydrogen, and it takes three moles of hydrogen to make every mole of NH3. Two moles of NH3 is actually exactly the same because we're still going to moles of ammonia. And 17.03 grams of NH3 per one mole is also the same because our grams to mole conversion is identical. Now, keep in mind what we've actually done here. We've taken two piles of ingredients, some hydrogen and some nitrogen, and we've seen how much product we can make from each one. Now, here's an important fact to remember. The limiting reactant gives the smaller yield. And the limiting reactant is whatever runs out first, and it gives us the smaller number. So here, nitrogen gives us 2.47 grams eventually, and hydrogen eventually gives us 2.75 grams. This 2.75 grams doesn't ever happen, and that's because our limiting reactant, the nitrogen, runs out. And when I have no more nitrogen, I can't make any more ammonia. So remember, the limiting reactant runs out first. And that's what allows us to say that this second step of conversion doesn't actually tell us how much product we can make. The smaller number is always going to be the one that's most important. Now let's go ahead and get rid of that whole bottom line, and let's think about what our limiting reactant is. What's our limiting reactant? Well, it's nitrogen. Remember, a limiting reactant must be a reactant, and nitrogen is what makes less ammonia. What, then, is our theoretical yield? Our theoretical yield has to be the 2.47 grams of NH3. That's how much NH3 we could make if everything went perfectly. Keep in mind that a theoretical yield has to be an amount of product. And that the theoretical yield has this definition. It's the quantity made if things go perfectly. Sadly, though, things don't go perfectly. Take, for example, these holiday brownies. My recipe said I was supposed to be able to make eight of them, but I only got seven. Why? Sometimes we accidentally waste some of the batter. Some of the batter is left over in the bowl, and even some on our nose. Sad times, we didn't get to make all the brownies we should have. We can compare how much we should have been able to make to how much we actually got with percent yield. Let's practice calculating that now. This problem says when 2.03 grams of nitrogen react with 0.489 grams of hydrogen, the theoretical yield is 2.47 grams of NH3. So, so far that's just all the information we've already determined in this video. Then it says when the reaction is run in the lab, so now we actually go do it, only 1.89 grams of NH3 are actually formed. Actually formed means that's what we got in the lab. It's like our seven brownies. What is the percent yield? Well, keep in mind that we've already calculated the theoretical yield and that only 1.89 grams of NH3 was actually formed. So that's our actual yield. Meanwhile, the 2.47 grams, that's what we call our theoretical yield. That's what we would get if everything went perfect. And we can calculate percent yield with this equation. Actual yield divided by theoretical yield times 100. So pause the video and see if you can calculate the percent yield. Did you get it? It should have been 76.518%. In a second, we'll round here for sig figs. So notice that we've calculated percent yield by plugging in the actual yield of 1.89 and dividing by 2.47. When we multiply that by 100, we get 76.518%, and technically we should round that to three sig figs and get 76.5% because our actual and theoretical yield only have three sig figs. Let's review what we've learned. First, we practiced a stoichiometry problem, where we calculated how much product you could make if we had an excess of one of our reactants. Then we practiced a limiting reactants problem. And there we saw that if we were given quantities for both reactants going into a chemical reaction, we have to see which one runs out first to find the theoretical yield. Lastly, we practiced calculating percent yield, where we compared how much we actually got to how much we could have gotten if things went perfectly. Hey.